First off, let me apologize for the quality of my voice. I lost my voice right after making the last video, and I've been struggling to get it back, really wanting to talk about this Chicago kidnapping incident and not being able to do so. But I figure a video with a scratchy sounding voice is better than no video at all. Anyway, as soon as I saw the news of the kidnapping and I sat through all 30 minutes of the live streamed footage of the kidnappers' crimes against their victim. I had two questions. First, to the extent the crime contains explicit mention of racial and political motivation, fuck Donald Trump, nigga, fuck white people. And I'm no lawyer, but considering Illinois' clearly worded hate crime statute, would these kidnappers be charged with hate crimes? And second, would a mainstream media that has been so willing over the last few months to cover spray painted swastikas on garage doors as hate crimes actually cover a documented case of racially and politically motivated violence against a white person. Let's take these questions in order. A lot of people were frustrated with the leniency the Chicago police expressed at their first press conference. Kids make stupid decisions. I shouldn't call them kids. They're legally adults, but they're young adults and they make stupid decisions. Some of it is just stupidity. You know, people just ranting about something that they think might make a headline. I think some of that frustration is warranted, but let's remember, these comments were offered in the context of an ongoing investigation. And so in that circumstance, it's wise to wait for the findings of the investigation and the corresponding charges to be filed before releasing your outrage. And sure enough, hate crime charges have been filed against all four suspects. I'm not a big fan of hate crime laws. These laws stiffen penalties for crime because of a biased motive, but to the extent they're on the books, I want them applied equally. In this case, it appears they will be, and so that's one sigh of relief in an awful story. To the second question, given the dishonest media coverage we've seen during this election cycle and beyond, I fully expected this story to be buried on TV news, to be buried on major news sites, or if covered at all, to have the most racially charged portions of the video concealed. To my surprise, the mainstream coverage I've seen, one, actually exists, and two, doesn't hide the key details in this story. The brutality of the incident, as well as the racial and political commentary in the video. CNN covered it. Donald Trump. What? You can tell from the video that the victim is white, that the suspects are black, and that they're speaking with anti-Trump type of language as well. CBS This Morning covered it. They repeatedly shouted profanities, not only at their victim, but also at President-elect Donald Trump. In the video, he is choked and repeatedly called the N-word. His clothes are slashed and he is terrorized with a knife. The Today Show covered it. A young white man that police say has special needs bound, gagged, and beaten by a group of African Americans. One attacker slashing his clothes and hair with a knife while spouting anti-white, anti-Trump rhetoric. What? Donald Trump. With Katie Couric explicitly calling it hate. Boy, a horrifying story about the intersection of violence and technology, right? Ugh. And hate. I think. It was a top story in the national news section of the New York Times, with the headline making no mistake about the racial component of this attack. Now maybe this should have been the top story instead of just a story, and I do agree if the races or the political persuasions were reversed, this would be the top story for probably several days if not longer. Maybe reporters should have been quicker to call this a hate crime. Though I can't fault any reporter who defers to police investigation before commenting. Overall, I'm inclined to give credit where due here. The mainstream coverage I've seen has been mostly objective and comprehensive. They are not omitting key details of just how awful this incident was. You might call that coverage minimally adequate. But considering the work products of the media over the last year, minimally adequate is actually pretty dang good, if you ask me. I grade on a curve. Anyway, after watching the coverage, I was feeling a pretty good honesty and objectivity vibe. It may not be perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than what we've seen, and it's at least providing people with enough information to decide for themselves. The party was really picking up, but there's always a buzzkill, and nobody buzzkills a good honesty and objectivity party like Simone Sanders. Yes, Simone Sanders, Bernie's former press secretary, famous for saying, we don't need white people, 
running the Democratic Party. In my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party is diverse. As well as poor white people in response to the guy who was beaten and dragged for voting Trump. You voted Trump! You voted Trump! They, what do you say to the people who, are, who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh my goodness, poor Trump? white people! If ever there was an undeniable case of a racially motivated attack against a white person, this would be it. But if ever there was a person to deny it, it would be Simone Sanders. Unstoppable force, immovable object. All right, let's go. There's certain things that we, I, I can't say that it's a hate crime because Chicago police won't say it. They're saying they're still investigating it. They're not investigating, they, they're not done with their investigation. But when you look at this, Simone, they're saying uh, F white people, F Trump, how can you say it's not a hate crime against a white person? Before she answers, can I just point out the absurdity of this caught on camera title from CNN? Caught on camera? These attackers streamed the crime themselves. Are you catching me on camera right now? I recorded this. I edited it. I uploaded it. But ah, you got me. So this is absolutely sickening, but I'm going to say something that's probably not very popular. That's like saying I'm on CNN right now. That's just a given. Cut to the chase. We cannot callously go about classifying things as a hate crime. Motive here matters. So was this for hate of Donald Trump, uh, the president-elect, because of things that he has said, or was this for pure hate of white people? That matters. I agree that distinction matters, but why would you go on CNN to discuss this incident without watching the widely available first-hand broadcast of the event in question. Was it hate of Donald Trump? Fuck Donald Trump, nigga! Yes. Was it hate of white people? Fuck white people! Yes. Was it hate for Donald Trump or hate for white people? How about hate for Donald Trump and hate? for white people. Anytime someone says something or does something really egregious, really bad and sickening in this instance in connection with the president-elect um, or Donald Trump or even President Obama for that matter because of their political leanings, mm -hmm. that is slippery territory. That is not a hate crime. Hate crimes are because of a person's racial ethnicity, their religion, their gender, a disability. It is your political leanings because someone doesn't like your political okay. leanings and they do something bad to you. That is not a but hate Alice crime. Aside from the fact that it was abundantly clear at the time of this broadcast that both race and disability are a factor in this case, it does interest me that she draws a clear line with political ideology as exempt from hate crime classification. Why? I get what she means regarding race, gender, disability, other things that are innate. But why is religion obviously the subject of hate crime classification, but political ideology isn't? I'm not even asking sarcastically. I genuinely don't understand the distinction. Both are worldviews. Both are perspectives. Both are philosophies. I could see an argument that both should be the subject of hate crime classification or neither, but one and not the other. If you've got a good argument for her position, get in touch with me. I would like to hear it. Anyway, this is low-level nonsense compared to the purified form we're about to take a hit of. I just want to remind folks that w we cannot sit here and ignore that for at least for the last year, on very public display, um, the worst parts of America have been brought from the fringe into the mainstream. So that affects people on both sides. We've talked about white nationalists and white supremacists and the KKK, but there are also, this when this inflammatory rhetoric is out there, when someone is repeatedly telling you that your community is the worst of the worst, um, it brings out the worst of the worst in people. And so I'm not defending what they did, what these young people did was sickening. I would I would argue that they also need some help in in addition to uh, you know some consequences. But th this just didn't come out of thin air. Okay, I've got about forty seven questions here. Let's take the top three. How can you first say we need more information to conclude this attack was motivated by race and then say we need to consider it was other people's racism that motivated the attack? These attackers said specifically, fuck white people while doing it. 
but that's unclear. But if Trump used some nebulous dog whistle racial code six months ago, that is certainly a factor here. Second, to the point that, quote, this didn't come out of thin air, perhaps not, but why count factors in only one political direction? If we're talking about creating a racially toxic environment, why not consider Black Lives Matter rhetoric? Man, they beating up every white person. Man, that white person come down Sherman. He white. Beat this shit, bitch. And I just want to say that a good white man is a dead white man. Why not consider pro-violence media? Why not consider anti-white media? Why not consider anti-white academia? Third, even if I grant everything that Simone is saying as true, that Trump and conservatives and white nationalist boogeymen have created this environment, are they really the worst of the worst in this context? Isn't this case itself clearly worse. I don't like racial division or rivalry at all in any direction, but kidnapping and torture on the basis of race is clearly worse than sitting at home theorizing about an ethno state. But you can probably predict the response. The get out of debate free card with a longer shelf life than a Twinkie in a fallout shelter. You know what? The relationship of black people uh, in, to America is very different than the relationship of white, uh, relationship of white people to America. We're talking about you know, years, years, 200 plus years of slavery, 87 plus years of Jim Crow. Like, and I'm not making excuses for these things, but it is, it is not the exact same thing. We need a statute of limitations on blaming slavery and segregation. Honestly, that should have been written into the Emancipation Proclamation and the Civil Rights Act. Four score and seven years is about how long you can complain about this until we just call it good and move on. But fine, I'll consider this argument in good faith. I can consider the idea that historical slavery and segregation would have long-lasting effects on the distribution of wealth, therefore the distribution of opportunity to acquire and create additional wealth. Sure, that's why equal opportunity is important. But historical slavery and segregation is responsible for a kidnapping and a small-scale scalping and the remarkable stupidity to stream your own crimes and marvel at the commenters who are telling you about your upcoming visit to prison. She gonna say some y'all going to jail. Tell him, get off my page doing that. Hey, that shit. Just... I don't want to hit this too hard. Honestly, I was pleased to see Simone Sanders as a fringe voice, not only on this panel, but in media coverage generally. You can see the gears grinding in the faces of the others trying to process the logic she's presenting, or perhaps a lack thereof. But for the most part, the coverage and commentary I've seen on this issue is pretty honest about what's obvious here. And I think if there's one silver lining in this story, one element of serendipity, it is that this case is a clear demonstration that racism is not a one-way street. Even if we take the made-up definition of racism as prejudice plus power, I see a lot of prejudice in this video exercised with a lot of power through force. I would have hoped that we could learn the lesson that judging a person on the basis of skin color rather than content of character is racist regardless of races involved without such a tragic demonstration. But at least now, it's demonstrated. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at Matt C on YT. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.